Hey, JB from Huffy, and today we're going to go into some quick maintenance tips for you to get the bike back out of the garage and, you know, maybe in the driveway, sidewalk, cul-de-sac, bike path. Who knows where you're going to use it, but hopefully this will help you get it out there and running good and safe for your rider. So I have my kid's demo bike up here, and I'm just going to go through some things that you should check before letting your rider go loose, you know, in the neighborhood on one of these. So first thing I'm going to do is check my pedals. And I have this park tool, a uh, pedal wrench that they've sent over to us to demonstrate with. You know, pedal wrenches typically have a, a solid gripping area so that you can get a little bit more leverage in there. Pedals are one of the most common things that are put on incorrectly or loosen up over time and people don't check them. And that can lead to accidents and injury. We don't want to have that happen. So hopefully your pedals are still on the bike, and they are here, but these are definitely a little loose. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these up as much as I can by hand. And yours may still have the right, you know, and left orientation stickers on them. This is a demonstration bike, so I'm leaving those on. Um, <clears throat> but I have the right pedal here on the right side of the bike, which has the drive line. Um, and I've tightened it as much as I can by hand, and now I'm gonna go ahead and put this 15 millimeter pedal wrench into place here and give it a tighten. Pedals can come loose over time, like I said, and uh, some pedals, depending on the type of bike, typically adult bikes, may come with a pedal that's rebuildable or regreasable. Um, most kids' bikes and entry-level bikes are going to come with a standard pedal that uh, should just be replaced if it breaks or becomes difficult to spin. Um, so check that out for wear. If you have any type of play in or out or as you spin it, you know, it's kind of knocking around in your hand, you're going to want to replace that pedal. Visit your local bike shop and they will help you out with that and get you some cool new ones that might be in a better color for you or who knows. So the left hand side, and that's the tricky one, I'm going to flip the bike around here, left side, remember, is reverse thread. So instead of being righty-tighty, like most of us are taught, it's going to be lefty-tighty. So going right, like I am right now, I'm loosening it. Going left, I'm tightening it. And if you're catching this video and you're assembling one of these bikes, you should notice the sticker on there, but uh, hopefully that helps you out because that's a really common mistake. Let me go ahead and put my Park Tool pedal wrench on here. Hold my crank still and give it a twist and make sure it's tight. All right, so I'm gonna flip this back around other things you want to do is you want to make sure that your wheels are tight. So these are 15 millimeter nuts on my front and rear wheel. I'm going to grab my 15 millimeter wrench and I'm just going to make sure that they're snug. You know, just that they have enough pressure on them. Here on the rear, when I have training wheel brackets on, and specifically on our Huffy Kids bikes, um, if you tighten this down a whole lot, you're going to start smashing things together. So this is a good and snug, but not crazy tight type situation. In the front, you're going to want them pretty tight. There's no training wheel bracket there. You want to make sure that your uh, dropout washer, your safety washer, is still hooked into the little hole there. You know, so just in case you do have any type of wheel loosening situation, you're good to go. So these are tight and ready for riding. Another thing that we're going to check is to make sure that our tires have air in them. So the tire pressure is listed on the side. And you'll see, uh, depending on the bike and the tires that it uses, are going to have different pressures. I recommend for kids' bikes anywhere between 20 to 30 pounds, and you know, don't go beyond whatever the tire says on the side. Make sure that the tire is secure on the rim and it's not bulging out. You don't have tube escaping from the inside, and you don't have any weird like edges where the tire is escaping the rim. You want to make sure that that's all inside because as you inflate the tire. It's going to give you a really weird reading. You'll have tube come out. You'll have the tire burst in a direction. Um, it'll be loud and scary. It's not going to be a fun time, and you'll have to get a replacement tube and tire uh, for your bike if that happens. So let's go ahead and check and see what our tire pressure is. And a lot of you have these at home. This is a, a standard uh, tire pressure checker. Uh, a lot of times 
you get these as giveaways or a free gift from your insurance company or something. Uh, the guys at Park sent us this one. It's got the, the part for checking your tire pressure here on a Schrader valve, which is the same as your car. It's going to be the same on most bikes, um, you know, especially kids' bikes. You're going to have a pressure release uh, little part here, and that's just if you need to release some pressure, you can use that. It'll push the little valve open, let some air out. And the nice thing with the Park one is they include a Presta valve adapter. So if you have a bike that has Presta valves on it, you can use this adapter to help put air in and check your, your uh, pressure level. So I'm just going to move this here, undo my valve cap. And valve caps are kind of important. They keep dirt and dust and debris out of your valve area, which can cause leaks over time. So make sure you don't lose these, and if you need some, run to the store and pick up a set. Usually one package has four, and you'll be able to cover two bikes with that. All right, so I'm pressing the gauge down on there. Looks like I'm pretty good. I see 10, 20, and I'm going to assume that if I pull this down just a little bit, pretty close to 30. So I'm kind of in that sweet spot between 20 and 30 that I want to be at. So I don't have to add any air to this front one, unless I really feel like I want to hit 30 on the dot. but. I don't think that's completely necessary in this case. No one's riding this demo bike, but let's check the rear one. Let's see what we're at there. Once again, minding where I put the cap, and then replace the front one. Oh yeah, so looks like I'm only at 20 pounds on this one, so let's add a little bit of air to this one so that it would be more appropriate for riding. I got my pump, and some pumps are going to have a gauge on them as well, so that will help you line up, you know, where you need to be at. And I'm going to push my valve in a direction here where I can get to it easily. And normally I would stand on the bottom of this and pump it up, but hey, let's uh, just do it by hand here. All right. This pump says I'm pretty close to 30, and I might lose just a little bit when I release this, but let's see how close we are. Let's take the checker and put it on here again. Yep, looks like we're pretty good. 10, 20, and almost to 30 there. If I pull down, uh, maybe like a pound off. So good to go on this back tire now. That would be where I need it to be. Put the valve cap back on and we're ready to go. If, uh, let's say you have a rider that loves doing the, the skids and hitting their brakes real hard and sliding around, if you're uh, starting to show a little bit of uh, threads and fabric through the lining of the tire, probably time to replace that as well. Don't have an example of that on this bike, but uh, you'll know it when you see it, when the flat spots start to go all the way through the tire casing. So if your rider is graduating on from training wheels to pedaling on their own and balancing on their own, taking off the training wheels is as simple as taking this 15 millimeter off. Taking the training wheel off and putting the 15 millimeter on. And once again, this 15 millimeter is just holding the original training wheel bracket extra metal piece here in place. So no real reason to super crank it down. There's another 17 mil on the inside of that that's actually holding your wheel to the bike. So this is just keeping it nice and neat and in place. And if you're maybe handing this bike down to somebody that is learning with training wheels, all your hardware is still on the bike. So that's how you do that. Or if you're putting training wheels on, it's exactly the opposite. Take this 15 mil off. Slide your training wheel back on, making sure that this bracket here is aligned with the dropout. And it slides on. Now, if you have a different style frame and you put your dropout on, and let's say it seems like your, your training wheel is in an odd direction, maybe too far forward like this, or maybe too far back like this, 
you may want to check the orientation of that bracket holder on the inside. You may need to take it off and rotate it and put it back on in the opposite direction and try again. This one is exactly the same on both sides, but some of them do have uh, a little bit of an offset tooth on them for keeping the training wheel in place. So I got that snugged up. The other thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you don't has it have excessive chain slack. And this is a training bike, so it gets taken apart and put together a lot. And you can kind of see through the, the chain guard there or down here that I have about a half an inch of movement. And that's pretty tight in terms of a juvenile bicycle. You may have a little bit more than that, and that's okay. You just don't want it to be really sloppy where it can cam come off the chain wheels really easy. So check for that. And if you need to fix that, you can remove the training wheels, training wheel brackets with those 15 mils. Remove the bracket on the inside. I'll kind of go through this just a little bit with you. And I'm just going to do this on one side of the bike, so we don't have to take it completely apart for time's sake. We've removed those two. We'll remove this bracket. This 17 millimeter here, you're going to loosen this up. You're going to loosen the one on the other side. And you're going to pull back while holding the frame in place to create tension. And then tighten those back up, keeping the wheel straight and with equal gap on both sides of the frame. And that will help get your chain back in tension without uh, too much trouble. All right, so we've gone to that part. There's another part on the other side here that you're gonna wanna make sure is still working good, and that is your coaster brake hold. So you have a little Phillips screw here and a little nut on the back. Just make sure that this is still there and it's still holding everything in place. And that way when your rider begins to pedal backwards, they activate that coaster brake. So uh, I would say the majority of bicycles are kind of left out in the yard at some point in time. Let's say the sprinkler or maybe uh, mother nature has gotten to it a little bit and gotten a few things rusty or uh, Maybe you're just trying to prevent it in the first place. But lubricating the seat post can definitely help extend the life of a bike, protect the frame and the seat post from rust, and locking the seat post in a place where you might not want it. Especially if your rider is growing and you need to extend the seat post, it's not stuck anymore. So make sure you put a little bit of lube on there. Um, our friends at Park Tool, they have the PPL-1 and that is their poly lube and we would basically unscrew this put a little bit on there move it around with our finger to create a film and then put it back into place if you don't have uh, that type of lube around brake grease works well chain lube works well also although it's just not as thick so you know we'll go into chain lube as well park to us cl-1 that's their chain lube and Let's get to that right now as, while we're at it. So I'm going to grab a paper towel. And we have our chain here. And maybe it's getting a little rusty, or maybe we're just trying to prevent rust. But I'm going to take my chain lube, open it up the top here. And sometimes it's good to have somebody else with you. I'm just going to kind of lean it against myself and pedal as I go. But basically, I'm, I'm going to start leaving little droplets not a ton, I'm not putting a lot on, but I'm leaving little droplets on the chain as I rotate it. You'll probably feel resistance kind of get lighter as the lubrication gets in there. I'm going to go ahead and give it a few more turns, and then I'm going to take my paper towel and I'm going to start to pull up the excess. I'm going to do this carefully, I'm going to move slow so I don't catch a finger or anything, but I'm just cleaning this up a bit, and then you'll take your excess and you'll be good to go. Probably see some dirt on here, see some rust on here. The real working factor for chains is these little, little circles uh, where the bearings are on the inside. So making sure those are lubed up is what really matters. All right, so that should cover most of maintenance to get your rider out and back on the road or sidewalk or driveway or park path. 
um, wherever you happen to be and having their bike work the way it should and properly. So if you are having any trouble with this, make sure to reach out to us at our customer service line. They can help you out with any tips or tricks as well. If you're having an issue with your bike or if you have a local bike shop close to you, uh, stop in and say hello. Uh, they would love to see you as well to make sure that you are out being safe and uh, enjoying your bike. So hope this helps on the juvenile bike. I'll do another one of these for a young adult or adult bike um, so you can kind of see it on maybe a multi-speed bike or something like that as well. Thanks so much. Hope this helped. Thank you.